Other people care nothing about your rules and are doing all kinds of crap, and that's demoralizing our people, and our people are, you know, uh, should I do that, that split second poof, bullet to the head? You know, we can't do that. That's not who we are. And the other thing is, the only way we achieve peace is by being strong. You know, so that nobody even thinks about challenging us. And, you know, we have to start thinking out of the box here. We need to get back in the space program. We need to control It, it, it is essential because the Chinese are working on that now. The Russians are. We have to pay the Russians $77 million every time we send one of our astronauts up to the space station. I mean, that's absolutely absurd. And the other thing you have to remember about our space program is so many inventions came out of it. Your cell phone that came out, out of the space program. And when we got rid of that, we got rid of a stream of innovation that could have a tremendous impact on who we are as a nation. And the other thing we must re remember, our grid, our electric grid is archaic. And all it would take is an EMP, an electro pulse, you know, from the sun or from a nuclear device that exploded in our exo-atmosphere. And, you know, we're back to 1940, just like that. You know, we can't afford to let that happen. This is an emergency. We need to be hardening our grid. We need to have multiple layers of alternatives. We need to be much more active in terms of our cyber security, both in terms of our offensive and defensive capabilities. And when somebody attacks us, I know they need to get an immediate response so that nobody even thinks about attacking us in the cyber sphere. So, you know, there are combinations of things that we need to be doing. But if we don't get the military right, and we don't have appropriate defensive capabilities, we're going to get destroyed because there's evil forces out there, and they are not going to be appeased. Even though I know our government's been trying to appease them and thinking that they'll sit down and sing Kumbaya, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Uh, her question is about education, our education system. You know, we used to have the best public education system in the world. And uh, Alexis Tuckville was so impressed when he came here and saw that anybody finishing the second grade was completely literate. Uh, we have completely let that go now. And, uh, you know, education is the great divide in our country. I don't care what your social economic racial background is, you get a good education in this country, you write your own ticket. So it is absolutely crucial. And uh, so my stance is that the best education is the education that is closest to home. Uh, it is not a federal and Also, I think we have to find a way to give people school choice. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of people are stuck in a situation where the schools are not very good. And, uh, you know, the children, they keep churning out inferior products. And we don't want that. And, you know, every time you see one of these stories on TV where they're opening up this new charter school with a different way of doing things, you see the lines of people who want to get their kids in there. That tells you that there's a severe need there. And uh, so I, I think we have a responsibility to make sure that that place is available. One more question. One last question. I'll let you choose it. In demand. <laughs> 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 the man has been very patient on the end. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Spartan, for coming today. Uh, Rain surgeon, you know how important early childhood development is and how it can affect the child's opportunity. And as a resident of Manchester, I believe Everyone, regardless of where they are going, should be given the opportunity to grow to their full potential. Now, Hillary Clinton has committed to launching a presidential initiative on global early childhood development focused on nutrition and early childhood education for kids in the poorest parts of the world. Will you match her commitment to launch this new initiative so that kids not only survive but thrive? Right, future, okay, that's a good question. Uh, what I would uh, advocate 
obviously, you know, early childhood development is important. Nutrition, uh, child care, all those things are very important. What I have discovered, however, is that when the government does these programs, they do it incredibly inefficiently. Um, and they waste enormous amounts of money. Whereas when they're done by the private sector, they tend to be much more efficiently operated. You know, I was on the board of Kellogg for 18 years, and we were involved all over the world in early childhood nutrition and providing things free for them. And, you know, several other companies were as well. 